Hey friends, it's Tanya from Tinkering in Ink with Tanya, and we're going golden today. I have the August 2019 My Monthly Hero Kit here, and I was instantly intrigued by the glimmer inks and the medieval theme of this kit. I knew I had to try to make a molten gold background for that drinking. I started with a four by five and a quarter inch panel of Canson XL watercolor paper, in retrospect, I should have used a larger piece and taped it down to a hard board, but say la vie, this worked too. I was just messier. I did use my silicone mat again, so I didn't have to worry about uh, picking up stray ink because I can just wipe that silicone mat off. You can use a craft mat or a glass mat. Any of the multimedia mats are perfect for that. I used Lemon Drop and Creamsicle Hero Hues Reactive Inks to blend a rich golden background. And then I spritzed the heck out of it with pearlized water and tipped it up to get it to blend and drip downwards. This required some encouragement in the form of some spritzing, of more spritzing, and tapping the bottom edge on my work surface. Um, after I got the result I was looking for, I sped up the drying process with my heat tool and added some spatters of water and dried it again. I tried to preserve as much of the ink on the paper as I could because I wanted that richness of color to remain. And I love how the blending or how the lemon drop and the creamsicle blended together to create that uh, golden hue. I can't believe how well that worked out. <laughs> I And I can't resist spattering, so I add a little water spatter and dried that with the heat tool before moving on to the next step. And the next step was to water down a little bit of the gold glimmer ink. Um, I took some <clears throat> water with my number eight watercolor um, brush into the clean water and transferred that into one of the little wells on my palette and then dipped the brush in the ink pad at, pot and mixed it up. It needs to be pretty watery, about 50-50 mix, and I ended up adding a dropper full of water later to get it a little thinner to get it to drip and run the way I wanted it to. When I got it the way I wanted it, here I'm still working on it, adding some more, letting it drip. And I did let some of the drips go right back into that well so I could reuse them if I needed to. I used a paper towel because I couldn't find my rag and to pick up some of the excess uh, gold paint as it was running down. I was a little... Um, afraid to heat the gold ink because the, that can cause some bubbling and general weirdness, but when, was not a problem with this ink. So heat set away, not a problem. I can't believe how well that turned out. I'm in love with that gold uh, glimmer ink. <clears throat> now on to some stamping. I used my Misty and Memento Tuxedo Black ink to stamp the dragon. He isn't very big and is pretty detailed, so you're better off using a light hand and stamping a couple of times to prefer, preserve those fine lines. I did end up stamping two images, which worked out fine. I could try out my Copic color choices on one before I committed to what I really wanted to use. I decided on purple and green for the dragon so that it would stand out well on that vibrant background. This is pretty simple coloring with some minor shading. Definitely not um, worrying about light sources too much and honestly a bit sloppy. But the image is so small you won't really notice. I do have the Copic colors listed here in the upper left corner if you want to use the same ones. <clears throat> here I'm just um, I want to do two tones on the dragon I wanted purple mainly on the upper part on the back of the 
dragon and greens on the underside and on the tips of the wing. So I'm using the darker green here. Again, not paying real good attention to where the light source would be. And um, of the lighter green towards the tips of the wing and on the outer parts of the belly. Blending it a little more with the lighter blue, which is really a purple. Um, that is, those two colors were pretty close to the lemon drop and creamsicle. I could have gone a little fancier on those, uh, I don't know, what do you call those, fins on the back. And clear wink of Stella, because magical creatures should have some sparkle, and I just like shiny things. <laughs> I did die cut the little dragon with co a coordinating die, and another one out of a coaster blank for added dimension. Coaster blanks are an earth-friendly and inexpensive and easy way to, or alternative to foam tape. Plus, they're lightweight and slightly thinner. <clears throat> the next time you're out to eat, bring your coasters home with you and give them a try. I'm betting you will never go back. I do link to the company I've gotten my box of a thousand coasters from in the description box below. Now that I have the dragon die cut and glued to the coaster, it is safe to add a little star ju hmm, stardust jelly roll to the eye. More sparkle? Yes, please. <laughs> <clears throat> to add a little focus to the dragon and pull the sentiment into the grouping, I die cut some vellum with the Forest Sunset Fancy Die from Hero Arts that was, and tipped it upside down. This way it looks like mountain peaks above the cloud line. <clears throat> After figuring out the placement for everything, I stuck the panel in my Misty and stamped the sentiment in Versamark ink and heat embossed with Hero Arts copper embossing powder. More coasters for dimension and it helps straighten out some of the warping. Oh, and before I did the heat embossing, I stitched around the panel with my sewing machine. The card base is uh, Nina 110 pound uh, solar white cardstock. And that can handle some water and heat embossing, which is a good thing because I'm about to put it to the challenge. First, I stamped this itty bitty little flame image along the edge in lemon drop and creamsicle and celestial copper delicata ink. Lots and lots of little flames. There's the delicata, which is a really pretty fine ink. It adds that metallic color, but it's a nice sharp line. I tried some clear wink Estella. Didn't really like that. <clears throat> then went right to the gold glimmer ink. I still had some in that little palette. And that probably would have been fine. But no, I couldn't stop there. Next, I blended some more ink. Oh, nope. Next, I added some more of the gold glimmer paint after I filled in all of the little flames. You can see the shimmer, and again, would have been just fine like that, but I couldn't stop. Now I'm blending some more of the lemon drop and creamsicle ink on the edge. I'm getting close to either cutting this inside panel off because I've done too much, or stopping while I'm maybe ahead. <laughs> This is, it does look a little better after I or add the creamsicle and go back and blend a little more of the lemon drop to soften those edges. Off camera, I do go in and use the gold shimmer ink again. Um, and then I decided I wanted a sentiment on the inside. After rummaging through my stash, I settled on a mix of sentiments from Expecto Stamps by The Ink Road and Heirs to the Throne by Kindred Stamps. 
Those got lined up in the misty and stamped with Versamark so they could be heat embossed in copper embossing powder too. I do have to fuss a little bit, but make sure you use your anti-static powder tool, especially after all of the water and glimmer ink and all of the stuff I did to the inside. <clears throat> By stamping it twice with the Versamark ink, you get a nice, um, even uh, heat embossing. To help with the warping from all of the work I put that to, I put a heavy block on the inside panel for about 15 minutes, and it was nice and flat. That's it for this card. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and be sure to subscribe to my channel. As always, if you are interested in any of the products used in this video, there will be links below in the description box for this video or on my blog. Bye.